Time flies by quickly, with less than two weeks until the monumental launch of Starship Flight 3. Therefore, engineers at Starbase are ramping up more than ever. They haven't stopped working even for a minute in the last few days. One of the most noteworthy activities of SpaceX during this time was the significant changes made to the launch tower Mechazilla. So, how has Starship Mechazilla been upgraded to prepare for IFT3 this month? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First, we have to mention the new SpaceX Starship lift pin setup attached to the Megazilla chopsticks. These ship lift pins are designed to thread into holes located underneath the forward flaps of the ship. They serve a purpose. They connect the ship with the lower stabilization arms on the chopsticks, ensuring precise alignment during the stacking process. It appears that SpaceX has made adjustments to the ship lifting pin located on the left chopstick, shifting its position several inches closer to the tower. This modification aligns with a previous adjustment made to the stabilizer arm, which also moved the pin closer to the tower. These modifications seem to address a slight angular mismatch observed between the bottom of the ship and the top of the booster during the stacking process. But either way, this fix is definitely some out-of-the-box thinking. Next is the ship quick disconnect arm which is an essential component in the preparation process for Starship. They serve as a bridge to supply fuel and energy to Starship from the tanks of the tank farm. We can still see teams are actively engaged in modifying and reinforcing various components of this critical apparatus. Although upgrades are currently undergoing testing and may have some errors, SpaceX's ultimate goal is still to design a reusable tower that only requires minimal refurbishment after each launch. Moving down below, we can see that SpaceX has diligently and meticulously reinforced the concrete surface. The durability of these heavy-duty panels indicate that they'll be kept securely in place instead of enduring significant stress like in previous launches. The thick steel panels around the launch tower base have been carefully welded by workers. Like a suit of armor, they'll maximize their protective capabilities in the next launch. And they'll also determine the potential for a truly rapid reuse of the tower. Special mentions must be made of the tower's endurance capability to rotate rockets daily, even hourly. Clearly, this is not a joke. As you can see, Megazilla's lifting speed is no longer an issue like it was two years ago. We can recall situations back then when lifting boosters or stacking starships was a slow and meticulous process involving careful manipulation of the tower's arms to ensure precise and perfect alignment. There were even instances where human intervention was necessary during stacking to achieve higher accuracy. But now, that's no longer the case. Mechazilla's assembly speed has truly gotten rapid, whether it's lifting boosters to the launch pad or stacking two stages. The average time we've observed from them is about an hour and a half. Not including the time for testing and repairs, which naturally takes longer than usual. However, this figure is likely to decrease in the future to align with Elon's ambition of launching multiple starships each day. The more Mechazilla's lifting times optimized, the more advantageous it becomes for SpaceX's starship launches. Consider this example. The upper stage of starship has a fuel tank large enough to place objects into stable orbit in return. If it intends to carry its payload to Mars, the Moon, or another point where we have the greatest need for a vehicle capable of transporting loads that are hundreds of tons, it's got to consume more fuel. You'd want to complete the job as quickly as possible if you have anything to live in there, because the more supplies they need to get through the refueling process, the more fuel they have to take to know where they're going. The only current way we have to provide it with that amount of fuel is by using oil tankers launched from the same base that Starship's done. In theory, they could assemble all of them at once and move them out one pad at a time. But that means they'll need more than a dozen stages below and upper stages to support each upper stage of Starship, and the potential cost advantage of the system will largely evaporate. The ideal cost configuration would be to have one Starship, one oil taker, and one booster, with the latter two flying multiple times a day. If successful, it could bring rocket launch costs to unprecedented lows. However, it won't be efficient if the overall turnaround time for checks, stacking, and fueling the oil taker takes too long. While currently, there's not much that can be done to reduce the time needed for checks and fueling. Therefore, as Mechazilla's lifting efficiency continues to improve over time, it'll help SpaceX optimize part of the time to achieve the most effective operational efficiency for Starship. Returning to the latest updates at Starbase. 
The launch pad is also something that SpaceX pays particular attention to, as there are still scaffolding structures surrounding the deck. Looking ahead, there are considerations for additional enhancements, such as implementing a water jacket on the mount. This innovation, circling water both below and above the launch table, aims to bolster resilience against the intense conditions encountered during Raptor power launches. To be honest, if Starship were to launch immediately, it would feel challenging due to the additional preparations still needed. However, you also know that this doesn't significantly affect SpaceX, as their achievements in overcoming obstacles instill confidence that the launch site will be fully prepared for upcoming launches. This underscores their reputation for accomplishing seemingly impossible tasks. Booster 10 successfully returned to the launch pad after undergoing repairs of the production site. The road closure schedule provided by Cameron County indicated this important milestone and the smooth transportation of Booster 10 back to the launch pad is an encouraging sign. With the assistance of Chopstick, Booster 10 was securely positioned and is now ready for upcoming tests, including that crucial wet dress rehearsal. However, the completion of the wet dress rehearsal test necessitates the presence of Ship 28 alongside Booster 10. While work on Ship 28 is in progress, it has not yet been lifted onto the transport stand. Nevertheless, the delivery of two large cryogenic methane tanks to the launch site underscores the ongoing preparations for the upcoming test. This proves it won't be long until Ship 28 meets Booster 10. However, we can still speculate about two directions of Ship 28's movement. One option is to transport it directly to the launch pad for stacking with Booster 10, followed by that wet dress rehearsal test. On the other hand, Ship 28 might be taken to the production site for potential fixes related to previous tests. Both paths hold importance. With the decision contingent upon factors such as S-28's readiness and any identified issues requiring attention before advancing to subsequent tests. But no matter what, it's certain that the Ship 28 will return to the test pad before the expected launch date. Preparations are expected to pick up pace rapidly. With the FAA closing the investigation into that Flight 2 mishap back in February 26, indicating progress towards Flight 3 and environmental assessments conducted by other groups at Starbase, SpaceX appears to be in the final stages of completing necessary assessments. According to Elon's statement, the third test flight at Starship may launch in mid-March or even sooner. With SpaceX's current rapid progress, technical issues and ground support equipment at Starbase will no longer be significant concerns. With all eyes now on obtaining FAA launch approval. Excitement is mounting. The countdown is on. So be sure to prepare yourself to secure the best viewing spots for witnessing Starship's awesome performance. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.